All right, so I just picked up Nothing Phone 2A, and I wanna give you a close-up look and talk about why you may wanna buy this phone. pick this phone up in the US for 350 bucks. This is a mid-range device, but it doesn't feel or act like a mid-range phone at all. You get slim symmetrical bezels evenly distributed around the screen. You get the same camera system as on Nothing's flagship device, the Nothing Phone 2, and they continue their design forward look with the see-through backplate and glyph lighting, 5,000 milliamp battery, and a whole lot more. There's a lot to love about this device, including the price. Now I've been using Nothing Phone 2A for over two weeks now, and I, as I said before, I am loving it. So let's talk about what you get for your 350 bucks. First off, I'm gonna be saying 2 and 2A a lot. So just to clarify up front, Nothing Phone 2 is the flagship device that came out last year, and the 2A is Nothing's mid-range phone, which just released and we're reviewing today. Now, the Nothing Phone 2A has an eight core MediaTek 7200 processor built on a four nanometer architecture. Now, MediaTek is known as a more budget friendly chip, so this is definitely one area where nothing downgraded compared to the Snapdragon processor you get on Nothing Phone 2. But MediaTek and Nothing, they put a lot into making this processor highly competitive in terms of performance. And I can report that this phone runs great. Whether daily usage or gaming, I've found no issues with the performance of this phone. This phone is buttery smooth. Nothing Phone 2A comes with 128 gigs of internal storage and 12 gigs of memory. Now around the front on Nothing Phone 2A, you get a 6.7 inch, 120 hertz AMOLED display with Gorilla Glass 5. There's stereo speakers on the top and bottom of the phone, and there is an under the glass fingerprint reader, which works great and fast. And while this phone does have a 5,000 milliamp battery and nothing claims two full days of battery, I think more realistically, you're gonna to need to charge each night. That's just been my experience. You don't get wireless charging with this phone, but you do get 45 watt fast charging, which can deliver a full charge in about 59 minutes or so. On the front, you get a 32 megapixel front camera and dual 50 megapixel back cameras, one main camera and an ultra wide camera. It, Nothing Phone 2A can film up to 4K 30 frames per second. Now one note about the cameras, while Nothing Phone 2 and the 2A share the exact same camera system, there are a few minor differences. Mainly the fact that Nothing Phone 2's Snapdragon processor is more powerful and it just can do more with these cameras. So while you can film 4K up to 30 frames per second with Nothing Phone 2A, for Nothing Phone 2, you can go up to 60 frames per second. So it is a little bit more powerful in that one area in terms of, of video. Hey, just real quick, just wanted to pause for a second. One thing I noticed as I was, as I'm doing the edit on this video, is it does look like the back of the phone attracts a lot of lint. And it's not something I noticed in using the phone, but in reviewing it and taking the up close shots, it was hard to get that lint off the back of the device. So I do think the plastic backing does attract lint. So just something for you to be aware of. Also, this is being recorded on the Nothing Phone 2A using the selfie camera around the front. So it'll give you a feel for how that camera works. I'll put some photo and video samples here. I mean, from what I've taken, I think the cameras work great on this phone. I've also heard great feedback and great reviews in other areas. So I think you're fine with the camera system you're getting on the Nothing Phone 2A. Now, one area where Nothing has made a cut on the 2A is with the build materials. The back and surrounding edges are made from plastic rather than glass and metal. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this in a minute, but I do have to say I love this decision. The plastic material feels and looks premium. In my opinion, the sides of this phone are made grippier by having the plastic material. One of my complaints about the Nothing Phone 2 is how slippery this phone is in your hands. The 2A is a much grippier phone because of the materials being used here. The glyph lighting area is smaller compared to Nothing Phone 2, but the see-through design around the back looks amazing. And to be honest, I haven't found the glyph lighting to be as usable as I would like. So having it, but in a smaller area doesn't bother me at all. 
One important thing to note, while you can buy this phone in the US, it's technically not offered outside of a developer program, and there may be some limitations with carriers in the US supporting this phone from a connectivity standpoint. I personally have been fine using my phone on Google Fi's network, and based on Nothing's FAQs, every carrier will support the phone, however, some may be limited as to the 5G bands available. I'll leave a link down below to the FAQ page if you wanna read more yourself. Let's take one more close up look and I'll share my final thoughts. So ultimately the main budget cuts on this phone would be the materials on the back and the sides being plastic as opposed to glass, the MediaTek processor as opposed to Snapdragon, and the removal of the wireless charging, and there may be a few others. But really price is the key thing here and why I'm attracted to this device. Just for the sake of comparison, my main device, an iPhone 15 Pro Max, costs over $1,000. And because of that price point, I really baby that thing. I keep it in a case, I use a screen protector, I'm careful with how I handle it. In part because, I mean, I don't wanna have to replace this thing. It's gonna be so expensive to be out a thousand bucks, just not what I want. And it's a fragile device, glass is glass and glass breaks. But with something like Nothing Phone 2A that is pretty much a third the cost of my iPhone, I don't feel like there's as much quite on the line. With the plastic materials, I'm not as worried about keeping it in a case. If I break it, I'm not out another thousand bucks. I can actually enjoy the phone as it is without worrying about protecting it so much. So the question is, for the price and peace of mind that a $350 device provides, does it perform well enough that it could be my main device? I would say yes. You will not miss anything by going with this phone. If anything, it's probably the best choice based on price and performance and value. We have a tendency, or at least I do, to always want the top of the line, the premium product, you know, and that's fine and all. But if you're someone who's more satisfied with a great value that gets you 95% of the way there, then really nothing Phone 2A is for you. Hey, I hope this video helps you in your purchasing decision. If so, please subscribe, give me a like down below. Definitely helps out the channel, keeps me going. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.